Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm Steve Richardson, a bankruptcy attorney trying to keep people on their path to financial stability and independence through education. Now, no matter the size of a family business, the owner is an entrepreneur. This is an important realization as having an entrepreneurial mindset is key to the success and growth of any business. That's why in this episode of the podcast, I talked to Danielle Hayden of Kickstart Accounting about the entrepreneurial mindset, how to create a financial vision for your small business, and how to make sure that business weathers bad times. My guest today is Danielle Hayden, a reformed corporate chief financial officer, who's on a mission to help rule-breaking female entrepreneurs understand their numbers so that they can gain the confidence needed to create sustainable profits. After spending over 10 years in the boardroom as a corporate finance officer, Danielle is now the CEO of Kickstart Accounting Incorporated, where she helps business owners with bookkeeping, financial analysis, and education. She's also the author of uh, the book Profit Planner, uh, actually a whole series of books uh, called uh, Profit Planner. Welcome to the show, Danielle. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Yeah. Well, it looks like you're, you keep yourself quite busy with uh, all the, the work you do with your business, but also uh, um, writing, a, having written a series of books. So that's that's pretty impressive. Uh, but so you help out entrepreneurs and I see you, you uh, uh, talk to women or do you uh, sort of specialize or concentrate in, in helping female entrepreneurs or anybody? So we work with both male and, and, uh, you know, both men and women it's accounting. So <laughs> the accounting <laughs> principles are the same. Um, so um, we've just found that women don't have the same, I'm going to call it access to the financial information. Um, mm-hmm. They don't have as many places to go to kind of raise their hand and say, I need help. I don't understand this. And so we have found that by giving women this space where there's no judgment, um, they can come and say, look, Danielle, KSA team, I have no idea what you're talking about. Can you actually rewalk me through those financial statements? Mm -hmm. And we, it's just, it's a no judgment zone. Every single one of our clients, whether they're doing $50,000 in sales or a million dollars in sales, they get the same level of service from us. They get the same response time. You know how many times I've heard from a business owner that says, well, I know I'm small potatoes to that tax accountant or that 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 firm. And so I don't expect a, a response right away. I'm like, are you kidding me? You get a response in the same, <laughs> same way. So we just have found that we wanted to give women a place to say, I'm going to raise my hand and I need help. Mm-hmm. And women are, we're still trying to get women into the business fields, whether it's, there's lots of concentration on STEM, but also the, the entrepreneurship, you don't see as many female entrepreneurs. So they're still uh, trying to scale up and and uh, and get into that i would think well so it's really women. interesting how many women start business start businesses so for under 100k there's actually more women than men that start the businesses but they are there's less women getting to a million dollars so they're not able to scale their businesses in the same way and i really think that access to the financial information to say i don't have to do everything myself i can hire a bookkeeper i can hire a tax accountant I can get the resources I need and ask and and get that information to make better business decisions. So mm-hmm. it's closing the gap a little bit. And then, you know, accounting is a male dominated field. So we've hired a full team of women um, where they have an opportunity to really make an impact in the world but in, in, in a male dominated field. So love working with our, our male clients as well, though. Okay. Well, let's dive in uh, and talk about entrepreneurship and everything when, and certainly uh, the, the success of any business starts with the mindset of the business owner uh, and entrepreneur. You know, a lot of t- times people don't even think of themselves. They start a, a mom and pop business, a small family business, and they don't think of themselves as an entrepreneur, but they really are. And I think d- right there in terms of mindset, you're you're losing something when you don't realize that that's what you are and you have to start thinking like an entrepreneur. 
So what strategies do you recommend for transforming one's money mindset in order to achieve control over your business finances? Yeah, it's really interesting because I can't tell you how many of our clients have come to us over the years that said, I'm kind of that accidental business owner. I'm really good at plug, plug it in, right? Like I'm, I'm an awesome therapist. I'm a great, um, you know, I did this and I wanted to work for myself or people started asking me for help. And all of a sudden I realized I'm owning a business and I don't know how to do the business side of running a business. And so I think when we think of ourselves as an accidental business owner, we aren't ready to really um, grasp the role. Like we're not ready to step into the role of CEO, business owner, entrepreneur. And therefore we're even more reluctant to step into the finances role. So we are uh, really resistant to the fact that I actually need to know my numbers. Like there's filing a tax return, but then there's knowing your numbers. And so a lot of these business owners will start to think about, well, I need to hire. I need more. I need more help. I can't do everything myself. And um, there's this pivotal moment where you start, you have an opportunity to shift your money mindset to say, all right, I can make this decision from my gut. I can do what I think is best, or I can pause, look at the numbers. I can think about the impact of this decision that I'm making on my business and really actually think about how it's going to impact your taxes, what it's going to do to the, your culture. Um, thinking about starting to even have a culture, right? Um, we have a decision every time that we start to make those business decisions. So I think that the number one strategy that we can use in our money mindset is to practice the pause and to choose which role you're going to use in, in that making that decision. I am a business owner, right? I am a CEO of this business and I'm going to choose to make this decision with data and uh, not just my gut. So, uh, and one mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make and business owners make is they're, they're too tactical. Uh, they start chasing around, I got to do this, I got to do that, or uh, oh, that looks like a good idea. I'll implement that. And there are really, uh, you really need to start with mindset uh, and get that bigger picture and then think strategically. And then once you have your strategy in place, then figure out how you're going to carry out that strategy and you can start acting tactically. So would you say, you know, and the people you consult with and things like that, when thinking about money or thinking about their business, they're spending too much time at the tactical level rather than staying up here at, at meta mindset where they need to start. They're still doing the work. So there's so many of our clients who are still busy doing the work of their business that they're not ever stepping out to work on their business. So it is a budget season right now. And um, I don't know, maybe it's the corporate side of me that comes out once in a while, <laughs> but I actually freaking love budgets and budget season. And I get really, really excited over this, this tool. And I want to frame it as it's a tool. It's a tool for business owners to use. And the budget exercise allows for you as a business owner to spend some time not working on clients, not doing the day-to-day, -day, not meeting with your team members, but actually planning out what do I want the next 12 months to look like? What is going to be my intention for the year? What does my business model look like? What's my role in the business? And then to support me in that role, what are the other people and tools and strategies do I need in order to support that goal? Um, so the budget exercise is one of the best places. Like if you're listening to this, you're like, guys, I don't know, like, what are you talking about? Look at it strategically or take a step back. This budget exercise, I think is the best way. And it still feels tactical because I think that we go to the tactics because it's something that we can cross off the to-do list, something tangible that we can put our hands on. And the budget allows us to have something that we can put our hands on. It's something physical, something we're doing. So it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm just pontificating on a hike today, right? Like I'm doing something mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to walk away with a strategic plan. Well, it goes back to knowing your numbers. Uh, you, Everything you, does. You, right. You, and, and you need to 
you know, revise and 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 uh, and take a look, like I said, in budget season as we go into November and start planning for our new year. You know, we don't know. We talked before we started the recording about, you know, whether you should increase your prices and things like that. Well, if you don't know your budget, if you don't know what your overhead is and you don't know, you know, what do you want to get out of the business? What kind of life do you want to have? So and and what kind of income will be needed to support that that life that you want? Well, okay, do the arithmetic. Figure out what your overhead is. Figure out what your budget is. Figure out, okay, uh, in order to make enough money to cover my overhead and give me the income I want for the life I want, this is the price I need to charge for my goods or services, right? Yeah. See, I, I want to just touch on something. Um, you know, it's interesting when I started my firm nine years ago, I really wanted to spend so much time um, in the strategic mindset, like doing budgets and what you were just talking about, like raising prices and understanding overhead. And I loved that. Uh, I still do. But what I found is that so many business owners can't even begin to think about that because they don't have the bookkeeping in place. And that is why we've spent so much of the last nine years doing bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. And it is the fundamental. It is like, you cannot do a budget or any of the strategic conversation. It would be like doing that in a swamp, right? Like the sound, the ground is literally actually sinking beneath you because you can't build it without the right information mm -hmm. and bookkeeping is your vehicle to be able to make every other business decision, every other strategic decision, knowing how, what your overhead is. It starts with having clean and clear QuickBooks accounts and bookkeeping practices in place so that you have on time and accurate numbers to be able to do that second level strategy. Yeah. And, and maybe entrepreneurs may not know where to go to help because they think of uh, you know, all their accountant, that's the person that does my taxes, right? So they may only talk to their accountant once a year. Well, no, wait a minute. You know, there are a lot of firms. Now, some may just be tax accountants and that's what they do. But they, but uh, like you, I'm sure there are many others that provide a whole host of services, uh, businesses services, so that if they're, that you can help them so that they can work in their business and let you handle some of these other numbers and and uh, and work them through that, right? Yeah. So I truly believe that our bookkeeping and taxes should actually be done in two separate places uh, because we want to have a checks and balance. You don't want your tax accountant doing something in your bookkeeping that you don't understand and you don't have anyone defending you. And so we've, we truly believe that bookkeeping should be done by a different company than your taxes so that the bookkeeper can say, hold on, why did your tax accountant do that? It should be done this way and vice versa. So we want that checks and balance um, in, in the accounting world. And I get it. It's so hard because the one thing you have to do, right? Well, there's two. My mom always said, you have to pay taxes and you're going to die, right? There's two, <laughs> two things everyone's going to do. Um, my mom, every time she hears me say that, she laughs. She's like, I knew it was going to stick with you, Danielle. <laughs> um, but you know, we, as business owners, we know that we need to file the taxes. And so we go and we get ourselves a tax accountant, right? But then that becomes the person that we go to for kind of coaching questions, bookkeeping, financial advice. But guess what, Steve, they're trained for one thing. They know how to be tax accounts. They knew they know how to do your tax return. They don't know how to run a business. They they don't know how to do the bookkeeping. So finding the right team, I always call it a money team. You need to make sure you have the right money team that's setting you up for success. Well, and certainly, and it's your it's your signature on the tax return. No <laughs> right. what? So I know every year. I mean, I've had the same accountant since I started my firm twenty three years ago, uh, and. I trust them implicitly, but I go over that return uh, just so I can understand it. And, and sometimes I there's a there was a, a disconnect where they thought something from my PL meant one thing and it really meant something else, and we needed to recast it. Some things the the accounting stuff is way beyond my thing. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that, that, whatever you say, you put it there. 
but you do need to understand that and uh, and know know your business. And I think CPAs do know how, how to run a business, or they'd go out of business. So, <laughs> right. you know, they run their own business, so I think they do have a pretty good idea uh, of how that works. But uh, I, yeah, I, I like your idea of having two different companies. Maybe one's doing the the tax return, and the other is your outsourced bookkeeping department. Yeah. And is that essentially what you do or uh, it, does that basically describe your company? Yeah. So we have two, we have two, I have two sister companies. Uh, Kickstarter County Inc. does all the bookkeeping and then we have KSA mm -hmm. Tax Partners that does the the tax returns. And they are very specifically different because we want to be able to have that, that, that checks and balance. Um, what we do is so unique because we want to have mid-year calls, end of the year call. We're like, we're doing end of the year calls with every single one of our clients right now. So that every single um, business owner goes into tax season ready and prepared. Like it feels calm going into January because you already know what's going on. There's no yeah. surprises. Now, uh, any business should have uh, what my business coach talks, talks about as a, a purpose, value, and mission. And what you do in your business should be in, in, in alignment with that. Uh, and if you're, it, you need to create a financial vision for your business. Uh, and you talk about this as switching from a service provider mindset to a visionary founder one. What do you mean by that? And, and why do you say it's important? So I think that the big reason that this is important is so that we can, as business owners, start to think about the impact of the decisions that we're making. Because mm -hmm. so many of us, if we're at, we're like, 2023, things are happening quick, right? Things are changing. Business is changing. Um, it is it is rapid speed. And so it can be really easy to be the practitioner in your business, serving your clients, doing the work, um, helping your team, right? Like ooh, the fire hose. I'm a fireman. I'm just putting out all the fires that are coming, to, coming at me. Stepping into the visionary mindset is the process of taking a step back and steering the ship where you want it to go, creating the budget, making decisions that align with your intention for the year. You know, it's interesting. I hear more and more business owners uh, lately say, what if I don't want hockey stick growth again this year? Right? Like maybe that's actually not the best strategy for my business this year. Maybe it's not the best strategy for my life this year. I want to be home for dinner with my kids. I want to care for my aging parents. Um, you know, I have something in my personal life that I want to take care of. And having this hockey stick growth is actually taking me away from the whole purpose of creating my business to start. And so when you think about that, right, when you really actually understand what is my intention for the year? Like what season am I in? Then it makes it really easy to step into that visionary seat. I had a client, uh, Jenna, who came to us a, a few years ago and she gave me the, the probably to date, the oddest request I've ever had. She said to me, Danielle, teach me how to run my business at a loss. I'm like, super odd request, Jenna, but you know, I'm up for the challenge. Let's, let's do this. So we did what we call a catch up and we pull all the transactions into QuickBooks year to date. And so it's like November timeframe when we did this. And so we pulled everything in and we sat down to do what we call the financial review call. So it was her, her kind of like kickoff call after the catch up. And I said, Jen, I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is you're not operating your business at a loss. You are not losing money. Um, the bad news is that you waited until November to call me. And so we have no strategies <laughs> that we can implement at this point. Very few strategies that we can implement at this point to lower your, your tax liability. But here's what happened from this conversation. By her understanding her numbers and understanding the impact of owner's draws and personal expenses, Jenna's entire mindset shifted. She stepped into a season of growth. She wanted hockey stick growth. And so she was spending money on advertising, a team to support the new clients. She built out her systems, the operations. Uh, she was traveling, conferences. I mean, this woman was on a mission to grow her company. Mm -hmm. And then about 18 months later, you know, she's still riding the momentum of this. 
her intention changed. She said, all right, team, I need to buy a home. I'm ready to plant some, some roots. Um, my mom actually needs, needs some, um, some care. And so I want to find a home with kind of like an in-law suite so I could care for, for my mother. And the goal of her, her intention changed that year. And so when we did her budget, we were very clearly outlining where she was spending money so that she could save money for her home. And now she's the proud owner of a home at this point, and she uh, was able to care for her mother until her death. And so um, I think it's just a really important um, frame to remember when you're sitting in the visionary seat, I'm not telling you that you have to start holding board boardroom-like meetings and right? It's more than that. It's, it's actually setting an intention for your business and steering the ship where you want to go. Exactly. So in, in essence, what you're talking about when shifting from a service provider mindset to a visionary founder one is you, you, you got to take the blinders off and lift your nose from the grindstone and stop working so much in your business that you're able to step back to that strategic or metal meta level to make sure you're going in the right direction. Uh, I heard once that more businesses grow out of business than go out of business. And if you're not ready for what you need to do to handle hockey stick growth with, you know, onboarding more people and, and maybe going to uh, a larger office or physical plant that can handle that. If you're not stepping back and looking at it more strategically you're not going to be ready for it. You'll have the hockey stick growth and you tend, you would run the risk of growing out of business, right? Yeah, you do. And if you're not willing to spend money, so going back to the beginning of this episode, your money mindset, if you don't understand what's holding you back from spending money in your business, you might grow out of business because you're not ready to step into your power as a visionary and CEO to say, I need help. I have to hire somebody to help me manage this growth and being able to hire at the right times and knowing what systems and software. So I really love that, that, that point of you, you could grow out of business if you're not willing to spend money and get prepared. And right. And, and sit back and say, okay, uh, this is what you need to do to be able to handle that in my business. Now, a lot of businesses, most businesses were hurt by the pandemic, uh, but I knew it was going to come back and I knew it was going to come back strong. So I spent that time that I had uh, building systems and getting ready for it, being prepared. So when it did hit, I could handle it. So you need to have that to put that mind uh, mindset to work. Uh, so. uh any business owner, if they're going to be successful, it needs to know their numbers. We, we've been talking about that. Uh, overhead, projected income, things like that. Uh, you, refer, you refer to something called the called financial fluency, which involves uh, how to distinguish the numbers that matter and make finance simple. Uh, tell us more about that. You know, I think that when we, we, we sit down to look at our financial statements, it's like, oh, my God, there's so many numbers on this Excel file, right? Like it looks like hieroglyphics. Right. And, um, you know, when we send our clients their financial statements, there's like, I don't know, eight tabs on the, that Excel file. So it could be really easy to get overwhelmed in, in that data. Mm -hmm. And so we do what we call a financial snapshot for our clients. It's this really easy to read PDF that, that walks you through a highlight of your numbers. And so I want to give you a few numbers that if you don't have somebody who is sending you your financial statements and that's highlight reel, they, somebody can create one on their own. So there's three numbers that I think are the most important for every business owner to look at. It's your gross profit. So sales minus cost of goods sold. And I want you to be looking at that for the last 12 months and then every month moving forward so you can look at, at um, the patterns. Mm -hmm. It's your net income or loss, bottom of the income statement. It's the most important number. If you are not running your sub business at 15% profitability after you pay yourself, you are running a break-even business that is not healthy and sustainable. So net income or loss, we want to track it for the last 12 months and then for every month moving forward. 
And the last number is your monthly cash output. And that cash output is average operating expenses plus average debt payments plus average owner draws and personal expenses. Mm -hmm. Those three numbers put together, that is how much it takes in cash to run your business every month. The problem is that people look at your their profit and loss statement and say, okay, my average operating expenses are $10,000 a month. So that's how much I, I need to to you know, charge my clients. That's how much I need to break even. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to use to, to pro project my, my, my strategy. Well, we forgot about the loan that we took out six months ago mm -hmm. or the credit card payment we had to pay off in full, or the fact that we need to take an owner's draw or mm -hmm. that, Oh, I forgot that I actually commingle my business and personal from time to time. And I forget about the personal expenses, right? So we need to have those, those numbers so that when somebody, when you start to look at your financial statements, you can say, all right, I don't have to know every single thing, but if I look at these three numbers, it can point me in the right direction to find the holes and figure out what's not working. Okay. Yeah. So you can certainly have that, that feeling of drinking from the fire hose if you're looking at all the, the minutia of the numbers, but, and you know, all the different tabs on the spreadsheet, but, <laughs> yes. but if you have that, that financial fluency, I guess, comes from that that summary pay that summary tab that pulls all the numbers together crunches them uh, and that's something you help people with i i would think uh so they can you help them understand it so it's not overwhelming and they know there's a lot going on behind the curtain on those other tabs yes. uh, and they should look at it from time to time but they have that summarized on that one page and they don't feel so overwhelmed uh, which kind of brings us into the, the, the next uh, point. Uh, you talk about financial dashboards. Uh, I guess the uh, that that summary tab on the spreadsheet acts as one. But what other financial dashboards are there? Uh, are they are they general concepts? Are they particular apps that you would recommend or services? What are we talking about here? Yeah. So I think um, dashboards have this really profound opportunity for impact. So a dashboard is a set of numbers that are sent to you on a weekly basis by either your money team, your bookkeeper, um, maybe a VA, your operations manager, assistant, whoever. Um, this is something that we offer as part of our, our, our CFO services at, at my firm. The dashboard is sent to our clients weekly, and it's a tool for you to be able to uh, make quick business decisions week over week. And so I'll tell you exactly what's included on the dashboard. And as a business owner, I don't want you to prepare it yourself. Because I think, you know, we talked about the tactical, right? Like we want to be busy in the tactical. So a lot of business owners are like, okay, I updated my QuickBooks. My job's done. Well, guess what, business owner? Your job didn't even start. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's the same thing with the dashboard. If you put together the dashboard, you're like, all right, my job's done. Well, no business owner. Your job didn't even begin yet because your job is to review the information and decide how it's going to impact your business decision. So on the dashboard, we have cash balances, mm -hmm. credit card balances, and availability. Who owes you money, also known as accounts receivable? Who do I owe money to, also known as accounts payable? Um, and then sales month to date compared to budget compared to prior year. Simple. Mm -hmm. Not easy to put together but simple, right? Because your bookkeeping needs to be up to date and, and you need to have accurate numbers. But here's the beauty of this. You might have a lot of cash, but you forgot that you actually have to pay some contractors in 10 days. And so if you aren't looking at what's coming up next, you might spend that cash. You might sign up for the event, the 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 shiny object, the, the next thing um, without thinking about what's coming. Um, so I think that's one example of how we can use the the dashboard. Another example, I'll I'll never forget a, a client of mine. She said, you know, I used to plan out my calendar. Like I used to give people access to my calendar and let people book. And I was really just like a puppet to my business. So like when I started getting the dashboard, what I realized is that I needed to change my behavior week to week, depending on what the dashboard said. Mm -hmm. If my sales 
if I'm not hitting my goal, if I am not hitting the numbers from the prior year, then my activities need to be revenue generating activities. Mm -hmm. And I need to be asking myself what's working, what's not working and why. And so the dashboard allows us for those quick decisions every single week. Yeah. And, and you have to look at, and it, it, often businesses are cyclical or seasonal. So if you're, if you're not looking saying, all right, things are great this quarter, this month or whatever, I have some extra money, but then you have to think ahead and say, look, you know, I'm going into my slow season. I'm going to need some money to, to smooth it over, to, to deal with those highs and lows. So you need to step back more and that. Yeah. I can see where that dashboard would help. Yeah. yeah, that's seasonality. I mean, just even knowing that you have a seasonality, how many of us get caught off guard the first few, few years of business? I mean, our our summer, summer is really slow for, for my firm. It's like all of our clients and all of our leads just all go on vacation for the summer. <laughs> it's <laughs> very bizarre. The first few years, I was like, what is going on? Where is everybody? Um, and I really resisted it. And now... I give, I tell the team, this is the time that we take vacation. This is the time that we update it, update our work papers. This is the time for projects, right? So we're really, really intentional with that seasonality. But do you know why we know that? Because we're looking at our numbers. And so talk to your money team, look at your profit and loss for the last 12 months, because I've, I've heard some, a few people say bookkeeping is not useful because it's always looking backwards. I'm like, that's like saying we shouldn't study history in school anymore right? Like there's a reason we study history, right? We have to look backwards so that we don't repeat it, that we choose where we're going. And, and you have to keep analyzing, keep orienting the, the, in the business mastermind group I'm part of, we uh, have something that we talk about called the OODA loop, O-O-D-A. I don't know whether you've heard of the OODA loop. No, I'm, I'm going to go uh, look at it. Observe, orient, decide, act. It was uh, it was a system created by a guy who trained uh, fighter pilots in the Air Force. Uh, and you're flying your plane. You observe the situation around you. You orient your uh, towards it. You make a decision on what you're going to do, and then you act. But that, it, but you actually have to loop it. It's called the OODA loop. So you observe, orient, decide, act. Then you observe again what happened as a result of that action did it work did it not work uh, if it didn't work why didn't it work and you reorient to and make a decision to do something differently to improve that action so it does work or abandon it entirely and, and take up a different action but people may do that initially they go through OODA but they don't loop it and that's what we're talking about here and knowing your numbers and 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 seeing the patterns and saying, all right, this has happened. Do I need to take action or a different action on it? I love that framework. Thank you so much for sharing that. I am definitely going to go look that up. But here's why I love that the most, because I think we are all waiting for the movie star moment, like the Hollywood movement where the skies part and it's perfect. And that's the, the same goes for our, our numbers. Like, I get it. The income statement, the balance sheet, these financial statements, it is confusing for 90% of business owners. You are not alone if you're like, gosh, this is confusing. And so we're waiting for this moment where it all makes sense. And I know exactly how to use my numbers. Well, it doesn't work that way. Like what we're suggesting is that you do this every month. Like our clients get their financial statements every month on purpose because every month we want them to ask themselves questions and use the financial statements every single month. There's not like, oh my God, this month it finally all makes sense. Like, no, it's just, how do I get a little bit better and use right. the information a little bit more? So also in knowing the patterns and knowing the 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 highs and lows of your business and things like that in uh where you you got your busy season and your slow season and adapting to that on an annual strategy uh, beyond that there are going to be times when it's it's not just you it's not just your business cycling up or down things are bad it's a bad economy we're in a recession so, you know, every business is going to face hard times at one point or another. 
how does a business owner recession proof their business? How do they look at these dashboards and their numbers to create a meta level strategy uh, to make themselves as best they can recession proof? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, there's, um, I get it that every industry is going to be different in terms of how they are affected by a recession. You know, I look back to COVID and they're not all of our clients went through the same situation. Mm -hmm. There were some clients that those businesses were affected in a very deep way. And there was other businesses who really thrived during that time. And mm -hmm. so I don't want to sit here and say, follow these three steps and you're going to be a recession, right? Like that's not the case, but the things that we can do mm -hmm. is save for these times. Like we can, when times are still good, when we can see ahead, knowing our numbers, knowing what that monthly cash output number is so that we can have three to six months worth of, of finance of the operating cash saved, put away and then reacting quickly. If you're not looking at your numbers until tax time, the recession's already like slapped you to the ground, beat you to a pulp, right? Because you have no idea what's going on in your business. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business and it's irresponsible. And so if you, if while we're in a recession, you waited till tax time to look at your numbers, shame on you because you had 12 opportunities to see your financial statements at the end of every single month so that you could react quickly. Mm -hmm. You could make cuts if you needed to make cuts. You could ask yourself what's working, what's not working. You could change your activities and do more of what you need to be doing as a visionary. So I really think in terms of, of recession-proofing our business, it's taking responsibility for our, our role and the idea of checking in on the health of our business on a regular basis so that we can take quick, swift action um, before it's too late. Mm -hmm. So you basically plan for the bad times. Maybe have uh, some cash reserves or things like that that uh, are available. I mean, you should always have sort of a, a war chest, uh, whether it's to uh, recession-proof your business so that you have the cash available to get you through the bad times without taking some sort of bridge loan and incurring debt, but also in good times, it allows you to seize opportunities yes. uh, that, that might be gone in a couple of days or whatever, because you have the cash and the ability to take that action. Yeah. We cannot miss out on opportunities. Recessions can be an opportunity for for some industries and some business owners. So yes, having that that cash, being able to react quickly and then keep our mindset strong. You know, as business owners, we're responsible for the energy of our business. So mm -hmm. if I'm doom and gloom and I walk into uh the into our meetings all doom and gloom, I am causing a ripple effect across my team. I'm causing a ripple effect with my clients. And so it's it's our responsibility as visionaries to cast the vision and set the tone for our clients, for our, our teams, um, and just really think outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We talked earlier when we were talking earlier about dashboards and a dozen tabs on the spreadsheet. Uh, a lot of business owners can feel like you said they're in front of the fire hose there, or there are so many things that they have to do to with their business to be successful, but sometimes small incremental steps over time uh, can make that easier to do. So it's it's not so overwhelming. And the, the entrepreneur looks at it and says, oh, I can do that. Yes. And there's a, uh, we both have read a great book by a guy named James Clear called Atomic Habits. And I know you, uh, it, based on that book and another book, I believe, Scalable. Scaling uh, Up. Scaling Up, uh, help people to to approach what they need to do. How do these books and how do building atomic habits uh, help the entrepreneur to get done what they need to get done? How scary is it if you look at your numbers and you're like, oh my God, I lost my, I've lost money the last three months. I better throw the kitchen sink, right? Like I better throw everything at the kitchen sink. 
I'm going to cut expenses, lay off my team, uh, double down in marketing and see what sticks. Like one, that's exhausting. Two, I'm going to have no idea what worked and what didn't work. Um, and I, I potentially could really hurt my business. And so Atomic Habits and Scaling Up gives us the opportunity to say, I don't have to change everything today, but I can choose one thing and make a small change and then see how that small change has made an impact. Mm -hmm. Because just like compounding interest in our savings account or in the stock market works, the same thing goes for our habits and for the changes in our business strategies. So I encourage all of us, as you're as you're making changes to your business, as you're weathering through the recession, um, as where you're going through your seasonality, right? We don't need to change everything. Um, I have, I can still hear my dad yelling at me um, when when I was young. Um, I would get you know get in the car and I'd be so cold. I live in live in Ohio, so we got brutal winters here. So mm-hmm. I get in the car, I turn the heat all the way, I turn up the air all the you know it's full blast blowing it, and then all of a sudden you're like. Oh my God, it's hot. Turn the air down, right? And I'm 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 like you know, blasting the air conditioning because I'm so hot. And he's like, stop over correcting. And so um, I think as business owners, let's stop over correcting. Mm-hmm. Let's just make small changes and ask ourselves what's working, what's not working. Yeah. I, when they say it, when we talk about atomic habits, it's not an atomic bomb, it's a, <laughs> a very, very small uh thing in adam so yeah the the idea of atomic habits is building habits through very small changes that build on one another and that you know certainly makes it a lot easier so uh just to wrap up why don't you uh, just tell us a little bit about what your company does for people any listeners want to reach out to you and and maybe hey and and maybe you can help my small business and and get me a dashboard <laughs> that i could <laughs> be more strategic or uh, uh, thoughtful in, in my, how I run my business. Uh, how can they reach out to you and how can you help? Yeah, it's kickstartaccountinginc.com slash gift. Um, if you head over there, uh, we do have a gift for for your audience. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are uh, approaching tax time, there's a tax deductions worksheet there. Um, also, uh, our... Um, best methods on how to pay yourself as a business owner. So kickstartaccountinginc.com slash gift. Uh, you can turn it, tune into our podcast there as well, Entrepreneur Money Stories. Uh, we are on Instagram at Kickstart Accounting. Um, we use bookkeeping as a vehicle to help business owners better manage their business make better business decisions and educate yourself so that you can become the visionary of your business. And so bookkeeping is the first step. So we start with bookkeeping and then we're with you every step of the way, celebrating your wins, supporting you through your losses, uh, being your champion uh, through your business finances. Okay. And for those of you out there listening as you drive to to or from work, uh, don't worry, you don't have to write this down and get into a car wreck. We'll have all of this information in the show notes. uh, So you can just take a look at it after you listen and click through and uh, see what Danielle can do for you. So uh, thanks a lot for coming on to the show, Danielle. A a great discussion. And I'm sure uh, my listeners got a lot out of it. Thank you so much for having me here. I really appreciate it.